In 1981, Sony took its first steps on the original journey into the realm of digital photography. Sony's early start laid the groundwork for its future contributions to the industry, solidifying the company's position as a key player in the realm of cutting edge image technology. I'm a proud Sony shooter and I've been signed as one of their brand photographers for more than five years now. I use Sony for all of my professional work and all of these YouTube videos as well. But over the past five years, my work has grown and changed and with that change came my love for film photography. Unfortunately, Sony didn't get into the photography realm till around 1980 and put all their focus towards digital cameras, which to be fair, makes sense. Analog photography was fading out and Sony has always been about innovation. But that left me with a bit of an issue. I always felt guilty about shooting other brands of film cameras. I mean, being signed to Sony, I want to rep the brand as much as possible. So how can I do that while shooting film? Well, to solve this issue I was having, I made the world's first Sony 35 millimeter film camera, kind of. But before we go any further, we need to go back to where the story started. Like every photographer does around this hour, I was watching montages of old Japanese camera commercials. Not that I feel like I have to defend myself, but this is a totally normal thing to do at 2 a.m. on a Tuesday. Anyway, I was watching these commercials having a grand old time until I saw this Minolta ad pop up on the screen. I reran the ad and played it back and voila. Okay, hold up. I'm watching these videos and I have to say that the old Minolta Alpha logo looks a lot like the Sony Alpha logo. I might be onto something. Or I might be crazy. We're gonna have to we're gonna look into this one. Why do these logos look so identical? It couldn't just be a coincidence that two camera brands have the exact same logo and design. So I had to do some research. One quick Google search and I was led to this article. On the 19th of January, 2006, the company announced that it was quitting the camera business due to high financial losses. SLR camera service operations were handed over to Sony on the 31st of March, 2006. And Sony has continued the development of cameras that are compatible with Minolta autofocus lenses. So that sort of solved my question, but at this point, I wanted more direct proof that the Minolta Alpha line directly influenced the Sony Alpha line at cameras today. Well, after a little bit more research, I was able to stumble across this article. And not without Minolta's help, as all of Sony's early Alpha series cameras utilized the so-called Minolta Sony A-mount. This was in fact a little more than the exact same mounts Minolta had given its Maxim cameras. So that was it. Minolta sold off to Sony and Sony ran with the Alpha lineup from here on out. And I know this isn't the most insane concept in the world, but being signed to Sony as one of their photographers and having no understanding about this prior, well, let's just say I felt like I solved the criminal case. With this newfound knowledge regarding the history of the Sony Alpha line and the Minolta Alpha line, I had an idea. An idea that would fix the guilt I was having about using other camera brands for my film photography. All right, I'm currently trying to find this specific camera, um, the Minolta either A7 or A9, and I'm on eBay right now scrolling around and they look to be about $200. So I'm gonna purchase one from Japan, which is like the best place to buy uh, old used film cameras. And if you guys could, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like, comment, and subscribe to this video because now I'm spending money on these YouTube videos. Which I don't know if that's a good thing or a slippery slope to be starting on, but I'm gonna do it. So we're gonna order this camera so that I can create the first Sony film camera. Kind of. All right, so here's the camera. We have an A7, which we will probably go with. The Minolta A7 Alpha, which is so weird because if you look at that A7 logo, that looks exactly like the Sony A7S logo. We're gonna order it. It's $213.90 coming from Japan. So yeah, see you in a few days. What a funny idea for a video. Now it was time to wait. So let's talk about this incredible camera, the Minolta Alpha 7, also known as the Minolta Dynac 7. 
To be totally transparent, there wasn't too much on the web regarding the specific specs of this camera, and I think that's because it's pretty old and never really ran in the spotlight as one of the greatest film cameras of all time. With that being said, it did have a lot of technological advancements, and I want to talk about them. The A7 features a sophisticated autofocus system, providing fast and accurate focusing for capturing sharp images. It is equipped with a multi-segment metering system, allowing for precise exposure metering in various lighting conditions. The camera supports a wide range of interchangeable lenses, offering versatility and the ability to adapt to different photography scenarios. The integrated motor drive enables fast and continuous shooting, making it sustainable for capturing action or fast-paced events. This camera is also known for its intuitive and user-friendly controls, making it really accessible for photographers of all different skill levels. The A7 is built with durability in mind, featuring a sturdy construction that can withstand regular use in environmental conditions. The camera has a large and bright viewfinder, enhancing the shooting experience for photographers. The Minolta. A7. Tell me these cameras do not have similar features. I am kind of tripping right now. So as you can see, Sony A1, Minolta A7. Years of differences in technology, years of difference of upgrades, cameras, a whole bunch of things, but so much stayed the same. We have a dial here, dial here. We have a dial here, dial here. This dial on the front, we have this dial on the front of this camera. Now, if you look at the back of the cameras, we also have a dial here, dial here. All the dials, the same. Scroll wheel, kind of a scroll wheel. We have a autofocus button, an autofocus button. We have on off back here, which on other Sony cameras, the on off is back here, like the FX3 has that. We have a display screen, display screen. This is actually so cool to me. It's insane to see the history between old Minolta and new Sony. Like they're both alpha cameras, technically, both alpha cameras. Similarities between a 35 millimeter film camera and one of the highest end digital cameras to date. Sick. But now that we have talked about the camera, it's time for some surgery. To do this, we're gonna need some tools. So let's make a shopping list. First thing we're gonna need is paint. Black matte, white matte paint as well. Sandpaper, we're gonna need multiple grid sizes. I wanna make this thing as smooth as possible and make it look as realistic as possible. Third thing. Tape. We're gonna need some tape to make the logo. Ideally, we would be able to make a decal, but tape will work as well. Paintbrush, a very small paintbrush to fit into that very small crevice of the logo. And possibly an engraver, cause that's cool. And if I tell Stephanie I need it for a video, she'll probably let me get it. My plans as follow. One, sand off the Minolta logos on the camera, as well as the lens cap. Two, paint over previous logo with black primer. Three, add current Sony logo stencil. Four, spray paint stencil on both the lens cap and the camera body. And five, scratch off any other Minolta logos you might find. One, Minolta camera. Two, paint. Three, tape. Four, sander. Five, drill. And six, ambition. Let's get into actually designing this first ever Sony 35 millimeter camera. Step one, we're gonna have to do some taping. So I really went in and taped over the lens. I was really worried about getting any debris or small particles inside of the, the mirror and I just didn't wanna mess any of the electronics up. So I really taped over the front of the camera as much as I possibly could. The next step was sanding. I was a little bit nervous about this step just because I never really sanded anything like this to begin with, but I made sure to get a bunch of different grit sizes to make sure that I had a super smooth baseline to kind of clean up so after that I cleaned up the camera wiped it down and made sure that it was as smooth as I wanted it to be cool. next up I got this paper bag and cut it out just to cover the area that I wanted to paint so everything else around the camera was covered but this one little section over the top of the camera where I wanted to put the logo wasn't and I was able to spray paint over that without worrying about the rest of the camera. So it was kind of like a double tape job with the paper bag on top of all that. Next, I added this stencil onto the camera that my sister made me. She made it with a Cricut machine and I was really impressed with the detail on how small the stencil actually was. And yeah, put that on there, let that dry. Spray painted some white paint over it. Um, I was doing this in my office, so I was very nervous about this paint getting everywhere, but it ended up being okay. And I let that dry, did two to three coats on top of that. And I let all this dry overnight. <laughs> 
took off the bag and it was looking really good. The only thing I was gonna have to do with some last touches as I hand painted that circle into the O for the Sony logo. So that was really tedious. The first time I did it, I actually messed it up and had to wipe it off. And then I went back in and nailed it the second time, I think. I let it dry and then did some final detail touching up the rest of the logo. For anything you know, I had to add this camera strap. I actually had my old camera strap from my Sony a7S II that just says A7 on it, which is the perfect combination to put on the new Sony A7 35mm camera, so I had to do that. Now I present you with the first ever Sony 35mm camera, the Sony A7. Now, I think there's only one thing left to do, and that's to go out and put this thing to the test. It's kinda cool, huh? Using this camera, I couldn't help but feel like I was using a digital camera. It really operated the same way that some of my digital cameras operate today, and it made the user experience so easy. I was literally just pointing and shooting. I put this thing on aperture priority mode, so all I had to do was change my aperture a few times, and the rest of the settings would set itself. It's so like loud, here, listen, ready? It's really satisfying. <laughs> It also had an ISO reader, so I didn't even have to set the ISO of the film I put in here. It literally was as simple as me putting in the roll of film, setting it to aperture priority, and then going out and taking some photos. And I have to say, this lens and body combination really was impressive. The photos came out very sharp, especially for 35 millimeter film, and the colors were pretty good. I do have to say, I think I messed up in developing a little bit as they did come out a little bit blue, but that's okay because they are very cold, icy photos. So I think that actually lends a little bit to that type of photography. I was also very impressed with how fast the film could actually advance to the next frame within the roll. It was so fast and it really made me want to try to take this thing out, fast action photography or something along the lines of that. Again, I just want to emphasize, this felt like I was using a digital camera. I mean, I kept checking the back of the screen being like, camera woman, I did it again. I looked at the screen every time. I'm like, what's, what's the photo? When in reality, I had to remind myself that it was film and this camera was full of features that I didn't even touch. Things that I know I could have dialed in more, but I just kind of let it do its thing for this one roll. And these photos came out pretty good. First roll through the new Sony A7 35mm film camera. So in the end, did I actually create the world's first Sony 35mm camera? Kind of, but not really. If anything, I had a lot of fun learning about the history of these beautiful pieces of technology, and I enjoyed putting my own flair on it. Please don't take this too seriously. It's all in fun, and I hope it brought you some entertainment. Really, for me, I just thought it was super interesting that the Minolta Alpha line of camera really influenced the Sony Alpha line of cameras that we see today, and watching that history kind of unfold when I was doing some of the research was very intriguing to me, so it was kind of like a fun personal project that I wanted to put together. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot to me and it would be very helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.